Hello everybody, this is I Command. Welcome to the channel. We have a IACP game. Uh, this is from a local tournament that we had up here in Portland. Uh, this is from round three. And I have a special guest here with me today to help commentate on this game. Uh, please welcome IACP Steering Committee member, Chris. Howdy, y'all. Happy to be here. Happy to share the wonders of Imperial Assault and IACP. Nice. So... Um, this game we're talking about is going to be being played on the Endor Defense Station. So that's from the Captain Tarot map pack. Um, and we've got Tom on the left playing Mercenaries against Asher on the right playing Empire. And before we get into the list, I just want to mention real quick, these players, uh, these are casual players. This is a pickup tournament. Uh, these guys don't play like big tournaments or anything. They're, this is total casual. And so if you see any mistakes or anything, just know that these guys are here having fun and coming out and playing and we really appreciate them doing that and playing on camera so alright now that we have kind of established the power level here uh, Chris can you tell us about Asher's list in the Empire yes I would love to so we are we are seeing uh, Asher run uh, Kane Somos with the IACP uh, cost ad adjustment uh, two sets of stormtroopers of elite stormtroopers with the IACP uh, cost offset, uh, a set of elite jet troopers, uh, a, a IACP probe droid that has been reduced from uh, five points to four points, uh, an Imperial officer, and then all sorts of fun upgrades. We have probably on both sets of the stormtroopers, we have cohesive fire team, which is a new IACP uh, skirmish upgrade card. Uh, then you have your standard Zillow technique, Roll by Fear. You have the new Suppressive Fire, which is an IACP uh, new card. Um, and you have uh, Doubt. And you also have Advanced Comm Systems, which is uh, an existing card that IACP has reduced the cost of to zero. Yep. And uh, Asher's got the two cohesive fire teams on the Elite Stormtroopers, and he's got Suppressive Fire on his Elite Jet Troopers. So awesome. So let's talk about Tom's list. He is playing Mercenaries. So Tom is running Boba Fett, uh, the new IACP version. He's got Shyla, who's seven points in IACP. And then everything else is standard. He's got Onar, uh, Jabba the Hutt, Temporary Alliance for Gideon, Elite Jawa Scavenger, and Black Market. And so we've got both players are playing, uh, again, on the Endor Defense Station. The mission is... Uh, I believe Take the Ruins, uh, the one where mm -hmm. you have to control the barracks for six points and the shield generator for four. And Tom is starting off with initiative. So he took the deployment zone on the left uh, that has the little room that you can sit in with that blocking terrain. And uh, yeah, so let's see. We've got both players are deployed now. And Asher doing Rule by Fear to draw an extra two cards and discard a card. And it looks like he is going to discard Planning. Planning. Yep, so uh, Asher's feeling like he's got, must feel like he's got a pretty good command card hand here. I, and I gotta say, it's it's so nice to be looking at an IACP game or an Imperial Assault game where there is just so many figures in one deployment zone because mm -hmm. uh, the uh, three-figure elite stormtroopers are now fairly viable to play. Yep, and it's nice to see stormtrooper armor on the table. Although yes. uh, we've got our work cut out for us here with all uh, all these gray figures to pick out. But we'll do our best. Uh, Asher has done a good job. He's marked his uh, his Stormtrooper figures. So he's got black stickers on one group and then no stickers on the other one. So that okay. way at least we'll be able to tell the groups apart. <clears throat> or actually I think they're red stickers. Oh, he's got red stickers on his Jet Troopers. So. Mm -hmm. um, so Tom has got I believe six activations. Um, Asher has, I believe, seven. So I think Tom's going to pass. Oh, no, he's going to go with uh, Gideon. Looks like he's playing single purpose. So that's going to let him focus two figures. Yep. Very fortunate card, card draw there because uh, uh, several of these hunters that are focused will be able to... Uh, potentially one shot some of these troopers off the board mm -hmm. and tom's gonna have to do a lot of that if he's gonna want to keep up with uh the points here <clears throat> because there's so many of these troopers 
uh, you gotta kill a lot of them <laughs> to keep their numbers in control. Um, so let's see, we've got uh, Asher looks like activated his officer and pushed the probe droid forward. Um, imagine he's gonna be wanting to open the door and take control of the barracks with all his figures. <clears throat> He can totally open the door with uh, his stormtroopers there. They are close enough. And I'm I'm wondering if Tom is going to want to open that door and take that fight. Or maybe just, you know, do like a last minute occupation with his Jawa. Um, so it looks like we've got Asher activating his jet troopers. Already move, double moving them into the barracks. Yeah, Asher is putting the pressure on Tom here to decide whether or not uh, how much he wants to commit uh, into uh, the barracks area. So it looks like one jet trooper took the long way around and the other one came up and opened the door. So job is activated. So now we've got all three of Tom's hunters are focused. And the jaw was going to activate and move up to take control of the terminal there. <clears throat> Um, so if, if, as long as Asher stays behind that blocking train line right in the middle there, I feel like he's pretty safe, uh, and it's going to force Tom to kind of commit to get to them. Uh, he might be able to come around the sides though and take shots in that way, like through that, <clears throat> that red piece of red terrain, the long one. And it's a risky proposition, uh, for Tom too, because he could he could move Shyla in and like Mandalorian potentially Mandalorian whip mm -hmm. uh, a jet uh, into range and take it out, but then she is exposed to uh, several sets of uh, troopers that will be shooting back at her. <clears throat> yep, and I'm imag I imagine Asher is going to be putting multiple figures into the barracks. Uh, right now, he's just got the one jet trooper. Uh, technically occupying the barrack space so he could whip it out but it's going to be tough to keep asher from contesting that middle space um <clears throat> he's probably and it's going to be a mm -hmm. it's going to be a reach for tom to try to defend both spaces here too we just saw him kind of counting spaces to the shield generator mm -hmm. and uh and, you know, with Boba, uh, six movement points, he can get there pretty easily, but then you're leaving him potentially exposed to uh, sniper fire uh, mm -hmm. from from Asher's deployment. <clears throat> yep. Now, although Boba is <clears throat> actually one of the better parts of this matchup for Tom because um, mm -hmm. Asher doesn't have any real big hitters in his list. Uh, like, the biggest attack he's got is... Kane and the droid, the probe droid, uh, and all the stormtrooper attacks are going to probably bounce off of Boba, uh, not at least not counting the cohesive fire team. So they can cut him down with a thousand cuts, but it's going to be a long path. So I feel like he mm -hmm. can kind of leverage here, that. And here we see Asher positioning one set of elite stormtroopers into a threatening position for the for the shield generator just to let Tom know that uh, if he doesn't time it right, Kane Somos can come up, come over and do some uh, uh, do some uh, uh, firing squad to mm -hmm. uh, have some sh troopers shoot outside of activation. Mm -hmm. And since Kane has advanced comm system, he can reach three spaces with that ability. Mm -hmm. So we've got um, Asher activating his probe droid to move it into the barracks. Trying to find a good spot for it. So putting it there does leave it exposed to fire from the shield generator. And now we've got Tom activating Boba. And it looks like he's going to move him up over to the shield generator, but not quite controlling it. Yep. Uh, Tom likes to play the, uh... safe with his Boba. So that's I feel like that's a really good move where you can, if you can keep Boba alive to the end game, he is such a strong figure. He has he has such a great ability to throw uh, unblockable damage on multiple figures, and so the the stormtrooper should be wary of him bombing in and hitting with like a wrist flamethrower. Looks yep. like we're at the end of the round. Yep. So it looks like um, 
Tom decided to leave the barracks uncontested and let Asher take the six. But you'll notice he's got uh, Shyla positioned right up against the door there. So what she mm -hmm. could do is she could open the door with an action, use her responsiveness to get one movement point to move into the barracks, and then be able to whip a figure over to her for an attack. Um, I like this conservative play. It feels bad to give up six points, but I feel like if you just let Asher kind of bum rush in into an open door, it's going to be even worse for Tom. So I like Tom's. I like Tom yeah. being patient here. Yeah, there was there was like we discussed earlier. There was a very tough choices for Tom here. Um, so sacrificing the six VP with the hopes that you can do enough damage come round four to catch up mm -hmm. is his play. And those stormtroopers do give up victory points if you kill them. They're not like the riots that only give up two points or whatever. So <clears throat> he could catch up on kills here. So we're gonna. It looks like Asher is taking the or has the initiative, and he's gonna open the door with his jet trooper. So he's gonna not be able to attack with it, and the second jet trooper is gonna come up and attack Shyla with flyby. All right, we got some dice. There we go. And a really good roll. Mm -hmm. Ooh, terrible for Tom. No surges to cancel and no blocks to cancel the damage. So that's gonna be six damage on Shyla. She's only got that's, 12 That's health. rough for Tom. Mm -hmm. That's very rough for Tom. I mean, it, he could probably handle Shyla sitting at four uh, and still be aggressive with her, but now he's got to think about pulling Shyla back and protect her VPs. But this could be good for Tom because... Uh, so, uh, Ash, I should mention Asher uh, talking about using suppressive fire to weaken Shyla, mm -hmm. which is also going to be not good for him. Uh, but because he, because Asher opened the door, that does give Shyla an opportunity to, since she doesn't ha have to use an action to open the door anymore, she could now step into the barracks, whip and attack somebody, and then run away, uh, and kind of do a, a peekaboo thing for the rest of the game, where she can hide behind that blocking terrain pretty well. So I imagine Tom's going to probably be activating Shyla here. Just because if he leaves her open to a barrage from those stormtroopers, it's not going to be good for her. So, here goes Shyla. <clears throat> oh, wow. Very aggressive. So he's going to move in so he can get line of sight to the probe droid. Going for the uh, the initiative kill here. Yeah, a bit of a gambit, though, because doing that means the probe droid will be able to follow Shyla into that nook. Mm-hmm. And he... Yeah, Shyla Tom hopefully weekend. has some... Uh, hopefully Tom has some hunter cards here that can rely on if the dice go bad. Yep. So Asher playing Brace oh, for Impact. Oh, Brace for Impact. Yep. Hasn't used Zillow Technique yet, so that's going to nullify Shyla's Pierce 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom playing worth every credit. A little bit out of order, but again, casual game. So, you know, that stuff's fine. Uh, hoping, so he, like you said, he is hoping to get the kill here, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that means he wants to remove a damage with responsive instead of using it for the movement point. All right, so... Going to lose Ooh. that surge from the weekend. We're showing five damage and a surge. Oh, and it's got a, he's got a surge cancel, too. That is not, that's not good with the triple block. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's looking at about two damage there going through. Um, although I think they forgot about the weekend. So four yeah. damage to the probe droid. Um, players forgot about the weakened condition there. Yeah, it would have been two with the weekend. Yeah, two with the weekend. Um, yeah. If he had an assassinate, he could have, might have gotten the kill. But it looks like he doesn't. So <clears throat> those probe droids are pretty tough, uh, especially when you've got Zillow and all the tricks of the trade yep. waiting for you, and you happen to roll three block in one of a. Yeah, <laughs> kind of crazy. So yeah, Shyla shirks back with massive disappointment. 
Not quite in hiding, though. Looks like she's going to take some shots here from these stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. So elite stormtroopers going to move up and use Grenadier. Ouch. So he's going to get Jawa, Shyla, and Onar for two damage there. Two. So now it looks like we're going to see Shyla take some shots here. So, so how how has uh, Kane been doing, as far as you know, Chris? Is he still a force uh, in the meta, or are people kind of testing other things? Most of this testing season, we've seen a lot more on the Imperial side with uh, the Imperial massive vehicles and playing with Boba um, mm. with vehicle synergy. So we haven't seen a whole lot of Kane, uh, but as from what we gathered from season season one, he was very, very, very strong. And his synergy, especially with the cost-reduced uh, Stormtroopers, is amazing. And so we feel like he may not necessarily be a tier, tier one level uh, type figure where you're going to have to bring him to a competition or feel like you have to. But he's definitely a strong enough piece now that you can build around him. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I definitely feel like <clears throat> Imperial Swarm lists are a lot more viable um, in ICP. And Asher definitely gave me the toughest game I had of the day when I played against him. So we had a Stormtrooper go up and shoot at Shyla, who was able to block all the damage. Uh, and, and because the Stormtrooper couldn't use its Surge to get accuracy, it wasn't able to use Cohesive Fire Team there, since that mm -hmm. does count as a miss. Yes. So yeah. The co so the cohesive fire team card essentially allows a trooper to, if they have if they have accuracy and do not do any damage and the attack does not miss, then they can you push one damage through, limit twice per round. Yeah. So that definitely plays into that kind of death by a thousand cuts strategy and helps against those tough matchups like Vader or figures with lots of defense dice that can stuff a lowly Stormtrooper attack. Mm -hmm. So Tom is activating Onar here. Focused attack. Probably going to try and figure finish off that um, probe droid, I think. Yep, so there goes the probe yeah. droid. So that should be five points for Tom since he's got Jabba. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we found in season one was a massive success, a surprising success, is the probe droid cost, cost drop. Um, dropping it down to Ford made it fit into list and become a real concern when it's holding objective areas like this. Yeah. So uh, Tom might have gotten five points out of it, but he is wasting he is wasting two shots on that four point figure. Yep, probe droid's very efficient now, at least the elite ones. Regular one's mm -hmm. still a little bit rough because they have three movements, so well, that's okay. So we've got Kane activating. We're going to take some Firing Squad Revenge on Onar. Onar. Um, not sure how that Stormtrooper got focused, but... Unless it was a Jet Trooper. So Onar taking some damage here. Looks like 10 damage onto Onar. Oof. Definitely, uh, Onar definitely, without any defense dice, is very susceptible to these um, multiple attacks from small figures. I mean, with Onar, even in the, uh, the original FFG meta, you could always count on him to survive about two or three attacks. Um, the fact that troopers now uh, are viable makes like one deployment of elite stormtroopers especially worrisome for him. Yep, exactly. And and Asher's got two, and Kane. <clears throat> owners, mm, owners are going to be in a rough spot here. Um, not sure if Tom activated somebody else already. Oh, it looks like he activated looks his like Jawa. Looks like he's activating the other. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's Asher's activation here. Uh, 
So Asher activating his second group of stormtroopers. Seems to be advancing on the shield generator. But not quite controlling it. Um, so he's putting them right there. Looks like he's maybe trying to uh, set up something against Boba or maybe go for a flanking maneuver. But I'm sure Boba. Yeah, that's. Yeah, go ahead. I think in a perfect world, he would have had those troopers moved up before he had moved Kane up to do firing squad. Mm. Uh, so that way he could threaten Boba <clears throat> with the firing squad on those sets of troopers. But it looks like he's just trying to maintain control uh, of that barracks uh, and potentially push Onar out before uh, before control points are, are scored. Yep. And, uh, you know, losing one Stormtrooper is not so bad. It actually kind of can be good since it gets focused um, when you kill one. Mm -hmm. So so Tom activating his Jawa here. He's going to take a pot shot at one of these Stormtroopers. Wrong shot for the Jawa. Uh, makes accuracy, though. He's got plus two. And he's focused. So, oh, but there's three blocks for that Trooper. Yeah, so he spent the surge to do um, the Jawa's ability to spend the victory point to roll a green die and gain victory points equal to the damage. Oh, okay. So he is the bargain. So that's what that green. Die, so I yep. guess he wasn't focused then. Yep. Um, so I guess it didn't do any damage to that stormtrooper. Nope, doesn't look like it. <clears throat> so does get a victory point up from that. So that's always good. Um, looks like we had the officer activate there. Just going to stay on that terminal. And now we've got Tom activating Boba ah. with urgency. So great, great card with Boba. Uh, so he gets eight movement points. And the nice thing with urgency, normally you have to, you can't interrupt urgency to. You have to spend all the movement points, but since Boba's card is spending movement points, you get to do that in addition to your regular movement. <clears throat> so it's pretty neat. Um, gonna use flamethrower here on these stormtroopers. So it's gonna be. So this will. Mm -hmm. So all the uh, stormtroopers are taking one damage, one strain, and become weakened. Yep, super powerful. Two, spending two movements. Especially points. against low HP, especially against low HP figures like these troopers, Boba is a real terror. Yep, and taking lots of strain on multiple figures is always difficult because it means losing a ton of cards. And it looks like mm -hmm. Asher's just going to take that as, as damage. He's like, I don't need to lose, I don't want to lose a bunch of cards for these dorky little stormtroopers. Good Imperial mindset. <laughs> With the extra uh, movement points here, um, Asher, or excuse me, Tom has the option to use Wrist Rocket and potentially put another three unblockable damage on one of these figures. Yep. So I think he's deciding what he's going to do. <clears throat> Looks like he's tracking his movement points there with dice. That's something I advised him to do with Boba. Just gets very, it's very, he's very resource management heavy now. Uh, so, yep, he's going to spend it uh, to do Wrist Rocket. And I think he's targeting Kane. Yep, he's going to go for Kane Somos with that one. Ah, okay. I think Kane is definitely a high priority for him. So, two damage on Kane. Spread some damage. And now he's going to play Mandalorian Tactics. So this is Boba's new command card uh, for you guys created for season 2.2, um, mm -hmm. and he's got the the printed copy. So <clears throat> we'll just talk about what it does. Um, so you get to you get a free move action, basically not even an action; it's just a move, right? So six movement points, and then he can mm -hmm. spend two movement points to perform a bonus attack in addition to his regular attack action for the activation. Uh, super powerful mm -hmm. card. I think there's been a lot of discussion on the Slack and on the in the community that 
this is the thing that makes Boba super powerful in season two? Uh, and maybe too powerful. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the feedback that we've gotten is it's great. Boba finally feels like he's worth 13 points, but now he is doing so much damage when he is focused, when he's able to do use hunter cards, that his both attacks just output a ridiculous amount of damage. And so we'll see here if he can if he can eliminate Kane off the board. Oh, we got a table foul. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna shoot at Kane. Decent roll, not great, but uh, <clears throat> he's gonna be able to search for plus two with that. So it looks like he's going to be doing about 6 damage there. Um, can't pierce. Only got the one surge. Let's see. And then, yeah, yeah so right now I'm seeing 6. That would put Kane at 8, which I believe makes him put, would put him at 4 health. Mm -hmm. So... Very susceptible to the second attack, taking him off the board. Yep. Uh, oh. Bit of a misplay, I think. Yep, can't tough luck. Yep. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on when you're playing Boba. A lot of stuff to keep track of. Yep. Uh, so he's got and four still movement has... points left. Oh, he's blowing it back. Um, so okay. I think he, yeah, so he could have taken, a, he only used one action there. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually asked Tom about this cause I saw this in his other game and I asked him what happened and he told me that he, he just got mixed up and he didn't understand how the card worked. So he didn't realize he had an, another action there. I think he thought that the move from the card took up his second action. Uh, this is his first time playing with the card in this tournament, so... And that's another thing that we've kind of heard back from Boba is that while everybody appreciates the fact that we are trying to make Boba into the bounty hunter uh, and to utilize a game mechanic with the movement points uh, that that isn't used normally, he is very complex and it is very tough to kind of track everything. Mm -hmm. And so, so we we're we're taking that feedback and we'll see we'll we're, we're not exactly for sure what will happen at the end of season two but uh whatever will happen uh we're looking at taking taking another chance at boba here and seeing if we can't get him to a place where he feels powerful but not overly complex yep so it looks like tom's going to finish off the round by activating jabba to focus shyla and it mm -hmm. looks like that's going to be the end of round two so Onar managed to survive that round and is contesting the barracks for Tom. And nobody's got the shield generator, so it looks like we're going to have a stalemate this round. Mm -hmm. And initiative going back to Tom for round three. Now this is where the game can really swing for him, unless there's take initiative. But Tom's that got doesn't the Yep. Yeah. <laughs> got to have those cards. And it looks like Asher's got to uh, call the vanguard, though. Mm -hmm. And good thing that his cane survived because I think it's the only figure in his list that can use it. Oh no, no the his jet jets troopers. can use it as well. That's right. Yep. So jet troopers are going to come up and maybe take a shot, do some damage here. Onar's only got mm -hmm. four health left. Oh no, Onar goes down. Yeah, nothing he could do to stop that, even with get down. Onar only had four health yep. left, so. Oh, that's a big swing. Uh, Tom's got so Tom's got a damage Shyla and Boba's still full health. I guess that was a focused. I guess that was a focused stormtrooper since he rolled blue, green, green. Oh, you know he might have just got rolled the wrong dice because he. Uh, yeah. It was definitely a storm uh, jet trooper. Casual play, it happens. Oh yeah, and it's easy to get that mixed up. Mm -hmm. um, I know I know. when I was first starting out to learn to play, it was everything I could do just to understand my own list, and I didn't do that very well either. <laughs> yeah, and I should mention that uh, Asher's in high school, so he, That's cool. he and a bunch of other kids from, uh, from their high school play together, and they come over to Portland to play in our tournament, so we love having them over. 
well, I am not going to drag the young man. Uh, I am just, I am here. I am here and happy to see people playing and being bold enough to share their play with us. Oh yeah, definitely. So it uh, looks like Shyla's activating first here. Gonna move, mm -hmm. let's see. That's it looks like four movement. And it looks like he's going for Kane here. Going all in to get Kane here. Yeah. And I thought Shiloh was focused. I might have just missed him removing the token. Oh, that's right. Might Asher have been had doubt. Doubted. Yeah. Yeah, might have been doubted away. Asher got it with the doubt. So he did element yeah, of surprise. But, uh, Shiloh. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at about five damage here, which I think we said was going to be enough to kill Kane. Should be. I don't. Well, she has to surge for. No, she wouldn't have to surge for Pierce too. So yeah, yep, that's there enough. There it is. So Kane goes down. So that's going to be seven points for Tom. And then I think you would get the plus one from Jabba. But I think mm -hmm. that one got forgotten. So is this a jet trooper taking a shot at Shiloh? Mm -hmm. She gets that automatic surge cancel, but it's not going to help since the oversurged. Looks like four damage to Shyla. Mm -hmm. Taking her right to one health left. Yeah. Tom really had to get Kane on that thing because he was sacrificing Shyla either way. Yep. So seven point figure for seven point figure there. Mm -hmm. And Shyla goes down to two jet trooper attacks. And we are at a score of 12 to 19. Tom's playing from behind here. It's all up to Boba now. Boba and Jabba make a really good team though. Uh, and Jabba, Jabba can fuel the comeback here with his ability to give one extra VP for each figure defeated. Because you're looking at a lot of Stormtroopers there that can give up that extra VP. Yep, when you're playing against the Swarm, you're definitely happy to have Jabba in your corner. Uh, giving you those extra VPs per kill. Um, Usually it's literally in the corner. Yep. <laughs> Gotta remember him to use them though. So we got Gideon activating, and it looks like he's going to focus Boba from downtown. And Asher activating his Stormtroopers, and we're going after the Jawa here. Stormtroopers quite good at executing Jawas, as we know from A New Hope. Too soon. Oh, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Only been 40 years. So... Two damage to a Jawa there. Second trooper coming up for some squad training. And, uh. Oh, big blank. Yep. That's gonna be five damage to the Jawa. So even if he used his take cover, Jawa's going down there. So, Asher up to 22. Taking the lead here. So many figures on the table and in a very tight space. And the third one's going to move up and take a shot at Gideon here. Gideon rolls pretty well though. Oh, he's got the reroll. Nothing. Don't don't tough luck that, Tom. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> So, yeah, taking two damage on Gideon there. I think you played the tough luck. That's okay. A lot of, especially when you're learning, you're trying to keep keep in mind where all the triggers are. And then when you see a trigger, you don't necessarily take the moment to say, is this when I should really use this card or not? So, uh, it happens. In Tom's case, I imagine it was more for the catharsis. <laughs> yeah, it's in my hand. I might as well do it. I finally get to play it. I'm going to play it. So now he's got Boba, who's focused, and he's going to do some work on these Stormtroopers who are still in their formation. So it looks like we're going for a wrist rocket on the nearest Stormtrooper. 
two damage, taking him to one health remaining. If I am mm -hmm. correct, yep, elite stormtroopers five health. That's gonna put him at flamethrower range. Well, let's see. He's spent. He's moved four spaces. He spent two on the rocket. I don't know, he moved one space, spent two on the rocket. He's got three left. He needs to... Hmm. Yeah, just going to flamethrower that closest space just to finish off the one, fl one uh, trooper and get three points plus the extra point from Jabba. Yeah, I think he could have gotten a little more... Well, he can still use Jabba, I guess. But I think... He's got an attack here. Yeah. So that should take out the other Stormtrooper. So Lots of symbols versus very few symbols yeah. equals <laughs> death. Don't have to do the math. Focused attack from Boba can take out a 3 health trooper pretty easily. So Tom's mm -hmm. at 18. Although I think if we... Uh, counted the points from Java, he should be at like 20, 23 or something. Well, I think he picked up the point from Java earlier on one of his kills, but maybe not on those. Uh, he didn't get it. He didn't take it on the probe droid. He only took four okay. for that one, and then he got one more for the Java bargain. So Tom now controlling that. Um, that energy shell, which he's going to need to start catching up in victory points here. Mm -hmm. um, going to take a focus shot from this stormtrooper. With a damage token, it looks like. Yeah, he used um, Price of Glory or that... Oh. Uh, I think that's the name of that card yep. where they can, he can suffer uh, damage to take a, uh, a power token. Yep, so a focused... Attack with a power token does two damage to Boba. <laughs> <laughs> Very tanky. I think he and should have actually Boba's, taken well, just one damage it, from that. Uh, Boba is very tanky against normal attackers. Anybody that has like just two dice, um, and even if they focus up and have plus two surge, uh, Boba's innate block one and evade one really chips into that it's where cards come in is where boba can be vulnerable yep just like stuff like vader you need big big high damage attacks to take him down mm -hmm. but if you rush him in uh if you just rush him in blindly into their into an opponent's formation he will go down like that's what i've had i had happen to me during the tournament opponent rushed mm -hmm. his boba into the barracks turn one and took uh two Focus Jin attacks and a uh, Luke lightsaber attack to go and went down. So looks like looks like we're at the end of the round here uh, with Asher controlling the barracks. He's got a ten point lead. Um, Boba's really gonna have to do some work. Uh, I don't think I don't think Asher can get all the points from kills, but he has got to get Boba in that barracks. To lock it down uh, yep. no matter what. So Asher playing a reinforcements here to regenerate one of his elite stormtroopers. That's... Uh, and that, that might be game. Yeah. I mean, it is more points fodder for because Boba to, to get. If Tom, if Tom can't kill both of those troopers and get into the barracks by the end of this round and make sure that Asher doesn't get into the shield generator with one of his deployment groups then I think that's it. Yeah, well, so he could rock it to kill the the damaged one. It looks like they're activating, though. So we got the focus yep. trooper attacking Boba for one or two damage, I think. One. One damage. Oh, he's got one. the reroll, though. Oh, got the reroll, yeah. For two. Yeah, for one again. <laughs> Still one, okay. Uh, now he's got a surge token from the other one. And 
Another one damage attack. Oh, goes down to... Oh no, it goes up to two damage. So it looks like we've got six damage on Boba now. Mm -hmm. So he's at... Uh, what is that? Eight health? No. Help me out. Eight health left. If he's got... If he's got six on him, then he's got eight left, yes. Yeah. And then they used Cohesive Fire Team's Exhaust Ability to add a damage there, and that's why Boba got up to six. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. So Cohesive Fire Team, not only does it let them tr push through damage through a bunch of blocks, it also lets them increase their damage when opponents don't roll so good on defense. So very strong. Mm -hmm. um, but it's I think it evens out for one point. Um and if Tom can kill that whole group, he'll get to score that point. So that's good. Yep. Tom, thinking he might want... That will help immensely. Mm -hmm. Might want to pass here. Because like you said, Boba needs to move in to the barracks. Oh, he's going to activate Boba right away. Because Boba can definitely kill that Stormtrooper with his wrist rocket. Can he get to the barracks? One, two, three, four. Four. I think he's one short. So I'm just thinking, could he move? Could he move? Wrist rocket the stormtrooper, get into the barracks and make an attack and possibly kill two figures that way. If he had the Mandalorian tactics from earlier, he would have. Yeah. But unfortunately, unless he's got another movement card in his hand, I don't see him doing it. Hit and run would help a lot here. Yep. He's all, he already used worth every credit and urgency, but I mean I I just pack my command deck with every movement card I can fit when I play Boba. So I imagine he's got yeah opportunistic could be mm -hmm. could be used here. Yeah, I think he's probably want to activate Jabba or Gideon before they get killed. Um, because Boba's pretty safe where he's at. But Gideon's not long for this world. It looks like he's going to go for Boba. And going to wrist rocket to finish that guy off for the two. Yep. Yep. Good odds on that. And that means he will have... He can still attack, but I don't think he has anything in range. Let's see what he's got. Oh, there it is. Yep. Opportunistic. So it's going to give Boba three movement points. Um, he's going to move away from the shield generator. And he's going to use tools for the, do tools for the job and hopefully catch the last figure in this Stormtrooper uh, group. Well, that's a pretty good roll. Pretty easily. <laughs> pretty easily. <laughs> yep. That's about 8 damage there to that 5 health figure. <clears throat> and he gets 4 points for that one. So should have gotten, what's that, 7. Should have gotten 9 points total if he uses Java. Mm-hmm. Looks like they're having a little discussion about well, the for the. Mm -hmm. And and he just finished off a reinforced trooper, so he should have gotten 12, 13, uh, plus 4, 17 total from that card. Yeah. Because of the extra uh, cohesive fire team. Uh, so he's going to move Boba back, but not quite have enough to get back to that shield generator. I think now we're going to see these troopers swarm over Gideon like ants on a bug. <laughs> so good roll for both. So that's going to be four damage, and I think that finishes off Gideon. So... And that was the uh, jet trooper. Mm hmm. So now they're probably going to start going after uh, Jabba. 
So kind of just a wave of dudes that <laughs> crashed through this map. <laughs> pushed its way through all of Tom's figures. Like a, like a tsunami, yep. the, the Imperial forces just crashed into Tom and just could not, he could not hold back the tide. Yep. And I think Asher played well. He kept his guys together. Um, just kept them pushing forward so they can get the attacks they need. Yeah, I think I think if Tom took a look at this video, I think he could see that hit where he had positioned Boba Fett so far away from the rest of the group kept him from really putting the kind of damage in that he needed because he kept him so like on the farthest, like the closest to uh, the bottom corner. Mm -hmm. If he had played closer to that middle green hallway, I think he would have had a lot more success getting points with boba as it is i mean he got 14 from boba which if you get boba's points back that's good but in this particular case he really needed more yep and we just saw a classic play by the trooper list here with uh change of plans so exhausting his um kind of damaged trooper group to ready his jet troopers for another go um, mm -hmm. used to play that card a lot back in the day when troopers were actually really good. It was really great when you could activate a full unit of stormtroopers and then exhaust your, like, one, one figure stormtrooper group to ready your full unit again. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, I think Tom, I, has been conditioned, because we, I play a lot against Tom, we practice a lot, uh, he's been conditioned to kind of keep his boba back, because he knows if you puts boba too far in i'll kill him as soon as i can sure so he, sure i think he that's a good mindset um i think again in this matchup boba's a little bit safer and he can tank a lot more damage like we saw so being a, just a little bit more aggressive um but again tom was in a tough matchup here just so many guys and they're so hard to kill because of zillow technique uh mm-hmm I think when you've got a hunt... Yeah, I don't even think we saw Asher to toss a card nope. for Zillow. Not yet. In this match. And we've got the Jet Troopers. They're all taking shots at Java here. Not super close range, but he's taking some damage. Looks like Java's at 5 health left. Um, yeah, and again, so when Tom's list, he's got, you know, just a few Hunters... They're really good at doing a lot of damage to one figure. They're not so great at doing, being efficient at killing off lots of low low cost figures. So, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a big hit from a jet trooper, and it looks like that is a dead Jabba. So it's just Boba left, and now Asher's got total control over the uh, barracks, which is going to put him over forty. Mm hmm. So. Good game by both participants. Very good. Yeah, well played. It got. I think the score was a lot closer than it looks to. Uh, I think Tom was at about twenty-eight or so. Um, it just didn't record those points. So, very close game. Yeah, with just a little bit of, a little bit more contesting of that barracks, and uh, just a few more fortunate rolls. Uh, the scum would have possibly outraced the Imperials to VP. Oh, you know what? I think Asher does not control the barracks at this point. Looks like his figures are just standing oh. outside of it. So we've got one more round here with Boba. All right. <laughs> so I don't think uh, Tom can can win from here. Especially, I'm curious what the actual score was, because he was at 21 and then he killed two stormtroopers, so. Let's see. Still going to hang back with Boba. And moving all the way over to shoot down the line. He's going to take a shot at that full health jet trooper with primary target. So he's going to be focused with plus one damage. It's like a range 8 shot, but I think Boba can make it. Yeah, with the focus, Boba should be able to surge into uh, plus 2 accuracy and plus pierce 1. Yep. And 
Not a good roll. Great roll for Boba. Bad roll for the jet. That's going to be a dead jet trooper. Yes, it will. Oh, he's going to heighten. Heighten reflexes for the full disrespect. Could he have <laughs> zillowed there? Could he have zillowed out of that? Um, let's see. Seven, eight. Surge for plus two. Oh, they have agile. Uh... Yeah, he could have he could have agiled the uh, the evade away uh, if it wasn't for the heightened reflexes. Right. So that so yeah, he actually needed the heightened reflexes there. So nice one shot kill. Gets uh, four points. Doesn't have job anymore, so won't get the bonus there. And I think that's going to close it out because now Asher just needs to move on to the barracks, and he's going to have control of the game. So yeah, nice to see a little hey, bonus I'm... attack from Boba. One shot of jet there. We might have the uh, the gentleman's um, uh, duel here uh, with Asher running at them, but you know the smart play here is to control the control the barracks and and get those points to to complete the game. Yeah, I don't think the stormtrooper is going to do much to Boba. Yeah, it looks like Asher is just going to. Move up into the barracks. So, yeah, that was a great game. Um, really mm -hmm. fun to see troopers being played, uh, especially with Kane. Um, troopers were good, used to be good way back in the day, but Kane never was. So, that's great to see Kane being played. And right now, the, the steering committee, uh, and based off the kind of feedback that we're hearing, um, we're kind of focusing on keeping trooper swarms like limited to where you can run elite versions of troopers of three of three figure trooper cards mm -hmm. but not necessarily touching up the regular ones we don't want the game to go to a place where there's 20 figures on the board and it takes it takes a player you know 20 minutes to resolve their side of a turn yep. um trying to overthink the sides um okay. so so we're gonna we're gonna look towards improving more of these three-figure elite trooper deployments uh trying to get them into the right price cost and then also giving them abilities so that they can they're worth um putting on the board and can contribute to combat combat like like the stormtroopers have done today yep and it looks like you guys are doing a good job with that um i have not played a whole bunch of games with stormtroopers but it looks like they do a lot of work Especially with the cohesive fire team. Mm-hmm. Um, we're and cohesive fire team is is something that we're kind of happy with, but we're not completely happy with. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of the design feedback that we've gotten from it is it was initially it was too strong because we were allowing that um, unblockable damage to go through for every shot, mm -hmm. uh, which which causes all sorts of problems if if troopers get re reactivated um and especially against like uh queen pieces like luke skywalker jedi knight and boba and, and vader and so on and so forth um so we may be looking at revamping that card so that uh there might be some sort of floor to it but um but not to where it's a complete floor that it dominates a game uh, but also allows those trooper to can contribute in battle battle that you can guarantee that they're gonna you're gonna get something out of them. All right, well that's the game, Chris. I want to thank you for coming on to talk about it and commentate with me, and I want to thank all of you for watching, mm -hmm. and thank you to all my Patreon supporters and Chris, you're a Patreon supporter. Thank you very much for your support of the channel. Uh, Noah, thank you for running the channel. Uh, I've always enjoyed it, and I'm happy to contribute, and I'm really happy to get my custom cards from you. Yep, I'm glad they was got to you. We appreciate all of you who are watching, and we hope you have a great day. All right, everybody, peace out. <laughs> Bye, y'all.